Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is AI, the behavior tree. So let's go ahead and cover this example. First, let's cover the behavior tree itself. This video is going to be slightly different. I'm going to cover the basics of a behavior tree, and I'm going to show you an example of one working. I'm not going to cover all the individual parts in this video. There are individual videos for each part of a behavior tree, as well as the blackboard, which goes along with the behavior tree itself. This video is just simply going to cover what is the behavior tree and why we would use it. So let's get started. This monstrosity is a behavior tree. Now, it, technically this is an unworking behavior tree because I have nothing hooked up and this is more for an example. So a behavior tree. To access it, you can right click anywhere in your content browser. You can scroll down to artificial intelligence and click on behavior tree. And it's going to go ahead and, well actually let's go ahead and do that. And I'll show you a blank behavior tree. It's just simply going to start with the root. The root is where we start off and the root is basically where your execution begins. A behavior tree is going to go from the top to the bottom and it's going to execute from left to right. So let's look at our example behavior tree here. So we have our root. Now the behavior tree root itself only really has one reference. It's going to reference our blackboard object. Now our blackboard object will be covered in detail in another video, but for basic simple explanation, it is an item that stores references to other items. In this case, I have a boolean called is player alive and a player object which is a vector that I used in order to actually record where the player is currently at. The blackboard is just simply used to hold information and it is where you access and store information when you are needing information in the behavior tree. It's kind of silly to say it like that, but it's just, it is literally a blackboard where you store stuff and the behavior tree plays with it. So how would this work? Well, we have four primary nodes in addition to our root node for our behavior tree. We have our root node here. Then we have what is known as a composite node. That is going to be one of these gray nodes that we see here. We have a selector node, a sequence node, and a simple parallel node. In addition to that, we then have what's known as a decorator, which is our blue node here. And then we have a service, which is our greenish blue node. And then we have our finally, sorry, we finally have our task, which is our purple node. Now, if I hook this up, you're basically going to see why this is called a behavior tree. You're going to start and it's going to fall down and they call these like the leaves and you have like your branches and your basic flow is just going to flow down. In this example here for an overview, basically once it fires off, the root goes to whatever it's connected to. Now the root can only be connected to one thing. The root only allows one connection. So below that, we have it going to our selector. Our selector node will be covered in more detail in another video, but it basically executes their children from left to right, and these are their children, and if one of them succeeds, it will stop executing. If one of them fails, it will go on to the next one, and it will go on to the next one. If all of them fail, they all fail. If one of them succeeds, it stops and it will not do the rest. Our sequence node is basically the opposite. It's going to go from left to right, but it's going to do them in sequence. If this succeeds, instead of stopping, it's going to play the next one. If it succeeds, it's going to go to the next one. And it's only going to stop if one of them fails. Our last one is our simple parallel. Basically, this is a way to run one thing all the time. Well, sorry. One thing basically all the time in parallel with another group of things. So for our example here, we could be playing a sound while at the same time we're doing another selector that moves directly toward an object and then waits. These will all be covered in more detail in their individual videos. So in this instance here, we have our decorator. Now our decorator is designed basically to check and see if we should be doing something. It's a condition. In this case, 
is our player alive set? Have I set our player live variable, which is here, to true or false? Is it currently set? If it is, then it's going to go ahead and it's going to allow all of this to run. If it's not, it's going to fail. Now, since we don't have anything else to do in here, nothing's going to happen. So if our player's not alive, nothing's going to happen. Our next one under this is our service. Our service is basically, you can think of it as a function that reoccurs every interval. And our interval is settable over here. Basically, all I'm doing here, and this is a normal event graph, is every time it ticks, I'm checking to see if our player is alive. And if so, setting the variable. And if the player is alive, I'm setting a valid location for that player. So if we have a valid player, it's going to go ahead and run this. Now this will run as long as we are here. So let me go ahead and just hit our play button and go back to here. And you're going to see how this works. So right now we are running this node. This node is not failing. It is successful because we do have a player that's alive. And this right here, every 0.4 to 0.6 seconds, is checking to make sure the player is still alive. And if it is, it's setting a valid location for the player. Now you'll notice down here, we have our stuff executing. Basically, I'm telling it to move to our player, the location I've set here. Once it successfully gets there, it's going to go ahead and wait one second. Now, you're watching these bounce back and forth because every half a second, I'm basically nulling out the player, which means this is going to fail right here or move to because it can't fail. And then the next tick is going to set it as, as valid. This entire condition here, our selector and our tasks, are running all the time as long as we're in our composite node here. This right here only runs if this node is active and only runs when we tell it. So it's like something that's happening at the same time. So to show our example, let me go ahead and run this and you're going to see what's happened. Basically, we have our little character there and he's going to move over to my guy. Now, every half a second, I'm running my service, which is updating my location. So if I move, our character doesn't follow immediately. And if you notice, he's not coming towards me. He's basically going to the last known location every time that service is ran. Now this looks a little silly and stilted, but if you notice, I actually have basic working AI using my behavior tree. And if I was to fall off, unfortunately he is going to follow me as far as he can, and I have kill Z shut off, so that really doesn't help. So let's, let's turn kill Z to a more valid value, something like that. And try that again. Now if we were to actually fall off, you'll notice he's stuck. He's done. And if we were to go to our behavior tree, you're going to notice it's failing. This is running. Our player live is not set. And because it's not set, it's basically going to abort. And we're just going to keep failing out. Now in a traditional, more, less example tutorial version of this, you'd actually have a different selector above this that's actually going to tell the AI what to do. And you're going to have the AI maybe do nothing and then check and see if a player's alive. And if the player's alive, then do a move task. Or maybe look for a new player if there's no player alive. Or maybe every six seconds try to find the closest player so that way it updates the player. That's what the behavior trees are for. You can have it do all those different things running different services, and basically you run it from left to right, top to bottom, for programming your artificial intelligence. So this is a quick overview of what a behavior tree is. Like I said a few times at this point, every decorator node, every service node, every task node, and all of our different composite nodes will be covered separately in individual videos, and then it will all be brought together in another video or two or three, however much is needed, to cover it more in depth, actual working AI, working AI from start to finish, cascading sequences of nodes, and basically creating a more advanced AI using everything we've learned. So if you have any questions or comments, 
please feel free to leave them below.